Ready. Two. One. Oh, here comes the music. Untap. Welcome back to MTGU, the Magic the Gathering podcast for you. I'm James. Does the walker choose the path or the path the walker? I'm Rich. Screaming obscenities at my computer. I'm Blades. Uh, I'll just go last and think of a thing to say later. I'm Damon. <laughs> it's Thursday, the 19th of June, 2014, and we're coming to you live from Studio U. Thanks for joining us. This is episode 39. Upkeep. So, what do we have going on this week? What's the, what's in the news? Uh, Duels of the Planeswalkers 2014 is 50% off right now. 2015. Right? Oh, 2015. Uh, no, no, 2014. Oh, oh, is the last year's deal off. is out. Right that's now. really cool. Yeah, because the then, new one isn't out yet. Right. I'm I'm watching every single day. Oh. They've released actually what the cards are. It's a event avatar of Zendikar, um, and avatar of Ravnica are going to be the promos for that. Yeah. And they're also going to do. They've they've had a. It's supposed to be releasing before M15 pre-release, but they haven't exactly said when yet. I don't know when the release date is, but they've announced it's coming out soon, so go figure. Yeah. So. Any day now. Pretty exciting. A lot of times it's already out by now, so can't wait. I wonder if they were experiencing some technical difficulties. Which brings us to our next subject. <laughs> what 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 is different about Wizards? Oh. What is different about the Mothership? Actually, I think we should probably head on to our draw set since that's our click you. It is our click you this year. This this year, wow. Do we have anything else? Uh, yeah, let's just move right along, shall we? Yeah, I think so. Draw step. step. All right, so as we alluded to just a moment ago, um, for this week's Click You, we have the Wizards of the Coast Daily MTG website. Uh, they sent out a tweet, hey, we're gonna go down for just a little while, um, work on our website, do some routine maintenance, and when it popped back up again, uh, it was, Lots totally of black. Different. Lots of black was involved, and nothing was where I remembered it. And I tried to click on things, and nothing worked. <laughs> Winks don't work. <laughs> and, and, hey, I'm not complaining. Yeah. In fact, I think it looks. I think sweet. They, they fixed it now, didn't they? Though. Yeah, I believe it is fixed now. So if you haven't been to their uh, website and you're familiar with kind of the old layout, um, one you, thing I noticed that works now is if you go to if you just want to go to magic.wizards.com. It takes you there now? It, it takes you right there, which is... I always wondered why that didn't work before. Yeah, because I would always before just Google yeah. Daily MTG and yeah. then um, like find the right link in Google and then click there. Yeah, so it's just magic.wizards.com slash en. That's much... And and you don't even have to do the en slang. if you, don't you have want to. to. It'll just, take you to the English site automatically. Actually, it just randomly picks a language. No, just kidding. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Roll the dice. Um, so... Yeah, I think, and it's going to take a while for them to get everything going, I think. Uh, whenever well, This is a big switch over for them, they've, and they've, it's been a long time coming. Yeah, they've really streamlined it, it looks like, to be able to find a lot of the articles and things much faster, and to be able to find the gatherer faster, rather than having to go through all the convoluted one, back rows. One problem is if you had links before, I don't know that they necessarily all work. I think they oh. might work. The, the, the that's one of marks. the problems people were uh, experiencing. But uh, and so that's I think that's one of the reasons they switched on the old website again, and now they're kind of going back and forth, because you know if you have a bunch of bookmarks, right, that you're used to going to, and then you click on them and they they're and they broken. Don't work anymore. Have you have you played around with it, Blades? Uh, I've done it a little bit. Uh, when I first posted that I didn't like it, I didn't put enough effort into it, so I decided I'd give it another go, <laughs> and it my opinion has not changed about it. Oh, is that uh, right? Okay, so you're you. You're just you you like the utility of the old site a little bit better than the the slickness of the new site. Well, the old site I was never quite too fond of since uh, I felt like a lot of the new content was a little bit hard harder to find. You had to dig a little bit for it, mm -hmm. but as soon as you got to know it, it was it seemed a little bit fine. And now it's just I I can't even figure it out. Yeah, oh. it seemed like once you got used to it, there's it going to really be a learning to... curve. Yeah. There is. I do have to, though, they were tweeting about this last night and the day before. Um, that actually, the reason, one of the big reasons why they updated it was because uh, they're having problems with people's, like, 
space phones and Android mm. and uh, and this iPhones. is and this is very friendly toward this is very devices. friendly towards devices yeah. like Which iPads gotcha. and stuff. They now. couldn't have just updated it without doing a total site update. Right. So it's just to bring it into the 21st century, I suppose. Yeah, groovy. So. I think this is the one way that we can get 20 year olds to sound like 80 year olds, right? Like you know, you you have an 80 year old. They changed the freeway. I can't get to anywhere anymore. <laughs> How do I find my WalMarts? And they uh, switch up the the wizards, co you know, the the coast site, and we're like, what? Where do I find my my playing cards? I can't I can't find my trading cards anymore. Anyway. Where's Gatherer? At? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gatherer is still there, I believe. It's well, up yeah, at the top. I, I, but it is, but it, it even looks different. Yeah, yeah they they reskinned it. So, huh. but as like far as their like daily name. MTG, <laughs> I, I I'm not sure if I'm a fan of all black, but like they were saying in chat, uh, maybe it's veil cursed or something. I don't know. Oh. And fifteen. Yeah, flavors. that's well. It's like, like they say, flavorful. black is the new orange. Yeah, that's, uh, that uh, is very true. Did I get that wrong? I think it's orange is the new black. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about earlier. <laughs> it's yeah. like it's the like, near callback. It's, like, <laughs> it's like last night at D and D. I was trying to make a reference, and I even got it wrong. It was like. Um, oh great! Glass now houses sink ships. <laughs> glass houses sink ships. No, it was about. Um, Oh, I can't even remember. I'm sorry. That was that was a tangent that is never even going to be finished. Fair enough. All right, so let's go on to the draw step. I think first up today is Damon. Oops, let me do that again. Damon. Oh. Delver of Secrets. Cost one blue for a 1-1 one, one common creature, human wizard. Ability text. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may reveal that card. If an instant or sorcery card is revealed this way, transform Delver of Secrets. And the thing that it doesn't say is it transforms into a 3-2 insectile aberration with flying. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about cool one-drops before. We have the good old uh, Deathrite Shaman. He's really good. Um, we have Goblin Guide. You know, he's got haste, hits you for two damage. Um, but the amount of output, you know, as far as just straight damage that Delver of Secrets can lay on somebody, uh, backed up by some good disruption, removal, um, protection, protection, you can get a lot of work done with Delver of Secrets. Uh, so anyways, that was the deck that I piloted today for Modern, was Modern Blue Red Delver. And um, the game that I did win felt unlosable. Yeah, uh, it, you had like the god hand. Dude. Yeah, I just, I mean, I got out ahead early, and I just, which is exactly what Tempo decks want to do. You know, they help you get out ahead early and finish the game strong. So, uh, the one thing with Delver Secrets is you really want in the in the mid to high twenties of uh, instants and sorceries to be able to reliably flip your Delver of Secrets. So, if you're planning on building with this guy, um, you know, I'd probably suggest starting with a list and kind of keeping the ratio of spells, instants, and sorceries uh, about the same. Um, or else he'll just be a bad one one. So he also seems right. playing freaking legacy. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's legacy playing rug delver. Well. Yep. Like he is the win con in that deck next to like nimble mongoose and stuff. So. Yeah, but the difference between a uh, legacy and modern, the big part is a brainstorm to where you can stack the top of your library. Right. You can untap upkeep with this on the stack. You can brainstorm and set up the draw, which is pretty sweet. Is there a better one drop? De uh, Death Definitely Shaman. not in blue. De maybe Death Rite Shaman. Death Rite Shaman. Death Rite Shaman is banned. <laughs> <laughs> Only in modern. <laughs> oh. Not in standard. You guys are never going to let that down. Um, um, nope. No, Anyways, that's really all I got to say about Delver. He's really good, really fast. I had a lot of fun. I'm going to probably test the deck some more. You may see me stream, stream it some more I again in the future. Yeah, I hate this guy. He's the epitome he, of what I hate about blue. He, he is pretty next, good. Yep. He, he requires a list uh, to be built around him, however, where you do have to play uh, at the lowest end ever 20 instants and sorceries just to have a one-third of a chance to uh, blind flip him. And when he says blind flip, he means flipping without having any way of setting it up. So you're like, oh, look, I had a mana leak or a remand or whatever on the top. He flips without actually you setting up it, it up. So Absolutely. You got a card that's pretty sweet. Yeah, I am looking forward to the, to playing this card. Flames of the Blood Hand costs two colorless and one red for an uncommon instant. Ability text: Flames of the Blood Hand deals four damage to target player. The damage can't be prevented. If the player would gain life this turn, that player gains no life instead. So this week, uh, Rich sent me a Red Burn Modern deck that I am looking at building 
And this is one of the cards in it. In fact, this is, I think this is the first, this is the card that first caught my eye as far as what makes this deck special. I love this because it does all the things you want to do. First of all, it burns your opponent. Four for three is a really good burn spell. I mean, there, there's not many that, that do that. But this is also a, a skull crack. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, no life gain can't be prevented. Uh, and it's also, yeah, it can't be prevented. This is awesome. So this is what I want to be doing. Um, and, yeah. I, I didn't even know about this card until you showed me this deck. Yeah, so like, this is awesome. I, I think, you know, me and Blades had a very, very heated argument over this. I wouldn't very say passionate. it was heated. It was uh, Blades saying... It was a lively argument. It was Blade, lively. Blades, it wasn't heated. It was lively. Everybody said, both both said, this is a great card. Blades said, you probably only want two. Rich says, you, you probably want four. And for me, that is a very minor argument because I am such a lousy <laughs> Magic player that whether I play two or four probably doesn't make any difference. Well, right. <laughs> and, it, and it really just came down to like play style and the list. And Absolutely. Everything. But me and Blades both agree this is a great card. So. Yeah. It's phenomenal in modern right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's sweet. Three for four is awesome. And, and it's instant speed. I mean, and, right. and so in instant. response to Kitchen Finks going off? I know it. Or whatever. You oh know, the only gosh. thing that could have made it better is if it said uh, four damage to target player or creature. But in modern, uh, from my understanding, pretty much you want to just be going to the face anyway. Right? With burn, yeah. Yeah. If you're so. playing burn list, yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Moving along, we have... Rich. Yeah. This is way off I key, but I'm that excited. It's like a B minor. What happened here? Although, this is right. Burning Tree Shaman. Costs one colorless, one red, and one green for a 3-4 rare creature, Centaur Shaman. Ability text. Whenever a player activates an ability that isn't a mana ability, Burning Hand Shaman deals one damage to that player. Yeah, my card this week is Burning Tree Shaman. So, and we've been talking about modern a lot, and I apologize for those of you who are it's modern season for PTQ players. though. So. It, but it is modern season PTQ, and this card is like a dollar fifty on Surf City right now, out of stock. Um, kind of interesting thing, card. I mean, he's a three four for three, which is pretty sweet. I mean, he stays out of bolt range. He dies a lot of other removal, but at least not bolt. Um, he can attack and not be killed by a lot of creatures on the battlefield. Usually in modern turn four. Um, but the big thing, the thing I think is really sweet about this guy and why he should be seen play in Zoo and even Jund is the, the fact that he pings opponents. I mean, he pings yourself too, but anytime they activate an ability, I mean, they, they, they correct their fetch land, they're losing life already, but now they're going to take an additional life. Uh, they activate the Liliana of the Veil, they're going to take an additional life. I mean, it, it decks like uh, Splitter Twin and Malire Pod that want to go infinite by activating abilities, this will infinitely ping them, or however many times they activate it, they'll, it'll ping it for that many you know, times. So it's just kind of more of a, I guess, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a backup plan card, maybe? I don't know. Like He just seems like a really solid uh, card. He had some like inevitability, potentially, right? Right. I mean, even if they activate like their you know, spell skite to try to you know, move a spell around, I mean, they take another life, activate pod, they take another life. Um, if they activate, you know... Uh, like Vault to Archangel, whatever. I mean, it's just so many different things. He just pings them, and I think he'd be a, a really good slot in like a, a zoo list. Ooh, activate my my name. my man land, my mute vault or my yeah, colonnade. Like ping one, like yeah. Uh, activate your engineer explosives. You know, <laughs> ping one. Like I don't know. He just seems like he should see play, and he I don't know why he's not. But I mean. Well, he, he's been a little bit under the radar for the last little bit. He was really good in standard, and then as soon as he fell out of standard, he sort of fell a little bit out of favor. And he's he's just sort of been pushed to the side. Nobody's thinking about him. He's a 3-4 for 3, which is eh. And right now, in this current format, he seems so super good. Nobody's comboing off. Yeah, nobody's going to combo off. I mean, even against, like, Tron, like, it, it, all of the little teeny tiny eggs that they play to, you know, fix their mana and get their cards and stuff, it's going to ping them for all that damage. It's sweet. I think the only reason why they're not seeing this to play three in Zoo now. is because it's a 3-4, not a 4-4 four, four like Luxon Smiter. But I think that even in the, maybe in the sideboard as a 1 or 2 of and flip them around, you know what I mean? It'd well, be a pretty good card. Smiter is still the new hotness. That's still fresh on everybody's minds. Well, right. And it's also uncounterable, which is somewhat relevant. It doesn't get remanded. And it also, like, if you're playing against the Jun player and they make you pitch, then, you know what I mean, you get the Lux and Spider for free. But I just think this is something that those of you who are looking into playing Zoo or Jund, 
might want to take a look at double check. Absolutely. But you just might want to give him a try. Yeah, that's my that's my card. Okay, and finally we have Blades with this card. Path to Exile. Costs one white for an uncommon instant. Ability text, exile target creature. Its controller may search his or her library for a basic land card. Put that card onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle his or her library. Alright, so we all know Path to Exile is good. It's like a Swords to Plowshares from the older sets, but the with a pretty much bigger drawback for the most part, to where its controller gets to search for its library for a land card. Uh, you can do that to yourself, so it leaves you a little bit more versatility in it, even though 99% of the time, it's not going to be on yourself. But right now in Modern, uh, I wanted to go more into why this is starting to see a little bit more play than uh, Lightning Bolt. Uh, simply because a lot of the uh, bigger creatures out there right now is four toughness, and I've in the past I've been pretty big on uh, four toughness being the key thing in modern, to where three toughness will just get you burnt out way too easily. Path to Exile it doesn't really worry about any of that. Uh, all of the big combo pieces where it's a uh, Restoration Angel or the uh, Splinter Twin targets, a bunch of those have four tar four toughness. And this doesn't really worry about any of that. It also gets rid of uh, the spell sky, which is quite problematic for a lot of the combos. When you uh, when you picked this one, I and I was reading it. I was th trying to figure out what what, what you were going to say about it, and I was going to guess that you were going to say, "Well, the nice thing about this is that if you really had to, you could use it on yourself as well, and if you needed a land, is that valid or not? Uh, would, would it, you it's ever valid, do that? but it's I I have done it before." But it's fairly rare that you do do it. Yeah, so it's one of those utility cards where there might be, he said doo-doo. <laughs> it's one of those utility cards that uh, anytime you have a card that ha can get you, can be more than one card at a time, in, 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 then it's going to help. Well, like one drop, one white for, you know, exile that thing. Sure, they get a land, woo. But, you know, exiling something is really, really good, especially with, like, Snapcaster mages. I mean, Snapcaster path is a three mana removal plus you get to keep a body like seems really good and the artwork is sweet yeah Todd Lockwood the artwork really is job, really nice there's, I like the Rebecca Gway one too but I haven't looked at that one it's the promo from a couple years ago oh. but anyway sweet card I dig it okay absolutely art talk with MTGU yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's the end of our draw step let's move right along main phase all right, so today we're talking about building on a budget. Um, this is a subject that actually is probably one of our more, most requested topics. And it's also one of the more difficult topics, It really topics, is. Right? It, it is. Yep. Um, there are a lot of pitfalls because, you know, a budget for uh, somebody who's maybe 12 or 13 is very different from somebody whose budget that's 22 or 24. Mm -hmm. Or somebody um, who's, you know, 30 or 40. Like, right. big differences in the uh, budget. Budget also is different if you're single versus married. Uh, <laughs> budget, you know, I, I mean, when people say, like, I want it cheaper, like, they just mean cheaper than the thing that they don't want to get. And that is all very <laughs> variable, you know? It is. There's a lot of variance there. But um, I thought that, uh, who was it that said in an email to us, uh, no, it was a it was a tweet, wasn't it? Um, that said that we um, I should bring it up. Okay. Um, Keep talking, I'll find but it. But one of the huge things about the budget, though, is like one of the first things you need to do, first steps, is actually um, decide for you. You know, if you are looking to do it on a budget, what your budget is. Um, are you going to lot yourself twenty dollars a month? Is it a hundred dollars a month? Um, you know what I mean? Is it is it maybe you know just reducing what you're already spending as it is? Um, maybe not completely set you know what i mean you got to find out what works for you in your budget and what it's like because that's that's very important to start out with right um and after that once you find like you know kind of what you're looking for then you can go into like uh what you're wanting to do i mean obviously you know if you're building a new deck maybe you'll have more uh, money in that budget than say if you're just upgrading a deck right yeah for sure um so th the second step would be kind of finding out what your goal or like i guess is right like trying to break into modern trying to break into standard Right, exactly. Uh, just play EDH and have a deck that doesn't die right away to all mm -hmm. your friends. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of goals out there uh, and a lot of ways to meet them, you know, by using some of the budget techniques that are out there. So. Yeah, and maybe you're just a brand new player even and you're trying to, trying to figure out how to get into this game without 
dropping tons of money on you know because you might not even know how much you like the game right i mean Mm -hmm. certainly we love magic we're crazy about it but uh that doesn't necessarily mean that from playing it twice with your friends and using their decks uh you're gonna just love it forever yeah you're gonna go buy uh, it's hard to one yeah standard or modern decks and it's a lot to ask somebody to be like oh invest four hundred dollars even if i don't know whether or not i like this thing so um that can be definitely really tough yeah so when when you're wanting to build a new deck um Quite frequently, you're going to be asking, you know what I mean? Uh, like, you got to decide kind of what you're going to do, right? Um, I wow. found it. Did you find it? Go. Yeah. I am it's Bruce Gray. Uh, he tweeted, said, at MTGU, first podcast I've heard that openly admits that most players have a budget that restrains playing. Right. You know, he was just saying, hey, thanks, guys, for bringing this up. Because, you know, uh, most podcasts just are just about the cards. Hey, you know, use this one, use that one. Don't really. Yeah, yeah they care about the price. But. You know, but almost more from like a speculative sense, like oh maybe you can make some money at this, not like a oh you're probably gonna have to break the bank if you want to play yeah, this card. So. Exactly. <laughs> well, a lot of it at the same time is what you pigeonhole yourself into. Like I have no problems finding whatever cards I need, except for I'm pigeon myself into this one little control hole to where I only have the cards and the uh, all the cards around for this one control archetype to where there have been times where I want to play like something like Naya and mid-range or something and I just don't have the ability to do so. I don't have any of the lands for it. I don't have any of the planeswalkers for it. I don't have the means to and it's just so expensive to get into. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that that's, that's, that's key uh, is, is knowing what you're after. Right, like the thing is, so if, let's say you're building a new deck. Um, building a new deck is can be very, very expensive, especially like Blade just said. You know, he's a control player, and he wants to, let's say, he wants to play Naya Zoo. Um, now he's going to invest, you know, uh, more money into buying lands. Uh, he's going to invest more money into buying, you know, maybe some planeswalkers. Maybe he's got to, you know, invest in the new Stormbreath dragons and the Elspeths and or whatever it is in what format. Domri you know, Raid, is crazy raid. Like, <laughs> You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Very, very quickly getting a player set of some of these um, rare or mythic rare cards, you know, that can almost break a budget if you're on a budget. Um, so one of the things that I suggest doing um, is actually instead of um, trying to create a tier one deck, uh, create a, a much more simplified version of that deck and then start working up from there. Um, instead of maybe playing, you know, blue, white, red control, just play blue, white control. Um, you know, or maybe, uh, and then as you, you know, start to get the staples that you need, like your Supreme Verdicts or Sphinx of Revelations, then start picking up um, into the red stuff, like adding the Karanos or whatever. And, and maybe I'm repeating something you've already said here, but I think that it goes without saying that if that's the case, if you really want to play on a budget, then you needed to decide up front. <laughs> this is not a collecting. <laughs> this isn't, I'm going to collect every card I can. And I want a four of. It's okay. You need to decide. You need to pretty much decide on what color, or colors, what deck you're shooting for. Right. And it's it's actually a really good um, advice to just uh, stick within your co- like you know Blaze was saying about how he's a control player and he pigeoned himself, you know pigeonholed himself into a control aspect. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it just means that you know he's probably gonna be being, playing control for a long time until he invests into another deck. And that's not necessarily bad because if you are a blue player or a green player or whatever, and you're probably going to keep playing that you know color, then making an investment of a Corsair Crucifix at eighteen dollars or whatever it is now is going to be better than trying to pick up you know what I mean a Domri raid in a deck that you're never ever you you're going to try playing but you're not sure if you're going to love it or not. Um, exactly to where you're you you might want to play it for like a week maybe two and then you like stray away from it. Well, I maybe I did like this control archetype a little bit better. Uh, as for that, I'd really like to just get your friend base out there, make as many friends and mm-hmm. that are into as many different ar- archetypes as possible. That way you can trade decks from week to week. And just try things until you actually find the, the archetype that you're really uh, interested in. Right, or you can proxy. You can proxy up a deck, sure. test it, you know, stuff like that. Um, but the thing is, another big tip is also instead of you know buying, uh, right now we're about to go into M15. Um, M15 is about four weeks out right now. Three months after that, you know, all of Return of Ravnica, Gate Crash, and Dragon's Maze are going to be rotating out of standard, and we're going to have a whole new set, um, which is fun and exciting. But the problem is, if you are kind of only been playing for like the last year, and you're still looking into building and tweaking your deck, maybe investing money in say like a lot of the Ravnica stuff or the Gate Crash stuff may not be nearly as beneficial because it's about to rotate out. Yep. Um, I mean, I still think that the shock lens are very, very revel- relevant and worth picking up because they won't, they won't drop in value. You know, right, right. But, 
but then you have to decide, okay, does that mean I'm going to go for modern, or start switch over to modern, <laughs> or or standard, or do I just try to stick with standard? If, if that's the case, then you need to think about what's going to be yeah. best with your money. And we'll get into the investment <laughs> aspect here in a second. Um, but the thing is, so what I would suggest is instead of buying a lot of the set that's going to be coming, at, like releasing, or not sorry, not releasing, but rotating out of standard, it would be actually picking up a lot of this new newer stuff because, you know, that's going to be all fresh and new, um, or not fresh and new, but it's going to be still within rotation. Right, you got like 15 months with it rather than right. like four months. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. You know, you, mean, you have another year and a half compared to like three months, which, you know what I mean, investment-wise, it's a lot more effective to invest in the newer stuff. So, um, sorry, just Rich, really fast. There was a, a point you made a little while ago that I feel like is worth coming back to. You know, you, okay. you mentioned like... You know, start with a deck that maybe uh, is is the kind or style of deck that you want to play, and then instead of getting like the really good cards, get maybe uh, similar or equivalent versions that are slightly less. Uh, I think there's definitely some very um, concrete examples out there. Uh, a great one is probably like Heroes Downfall, right? Right, like Heroes Downfall right now is like a six dollar card on Star City, five dollars on eBay. Um, it's it's a great card, right? Two black, one colorless, destroy target creature, destroy tar target planeswalker. It does all of the things you want to do in black. It kills things dead. But, you know, at six bucks, if you're on a budget and you're trying to pick up a player set of these, I mean, that can, depending on what your budget is, it can, you know, uh, drain that fund pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but on the other hand, there's actually a lot of other cards that are almost as good. Not as good, but almost as good. On the other hand. On the <laughs> other hand. <laughs> thanks. Sorry. Rollback from last week. <laughs> um, there's cards like Ultimate Price. Uh, you know, one black, one colorless, destroy target, monocolored creature. I mean, does it hit all the things like Heroes Downfall does, but it's a two drop, you know, kill that dead, and it's like 50 cents. Mm -hmm. uh, you got Doom Blade, which is a, a 25 cent card, you know, destroy target, non black creature. Um, you even have Silence the Believers. Uh, you know, two black, two colorless, with Strive, you can exile things. I mean, you have these cards that are usually within a dollar to two dollars, you know what I mean, or less even, um, that are great great uh, replacements for Heroes Downfall that would allow you to have some more money in your budget so that you can spend on other things. Um, these are just great, cool cards to be able to kind of replace. And there's a lot of lot more examples. I mean, you could go into, um, let's say you're building a brand new deck and you're looking to playing Mono White. Uh, Mono White, uh, you know, aggro. Aggro is usually cheap because a lot of the cards used in it are usually commons and commons. There's a few rares, but I mean, you just play cheap, efficient creatures and you just play and you swing and do all that fun stuff. But I mean, uh, look at, you know, uh, a lot of these decks will play things like Soldier of the Pantheon, which is about, you know, $2. Like, it's pretty cheap on oh, the budget come down scale. Down really yeah, affordable, he's, yeah. he's two bucks right now. He's very, very affordable, and he's very, very solid. And he just is, for you guys who are podcast only, he's one white for a 2-1 body. Yep, and he's pro-multicolored. Whenever an opponent casts a multicolored spell, you gain one life. Um, they can also play things like Dryad Militant. Uh, it's a hybrid green-white for a 2-1 um, that says whenever an instant sorcerer gets put into a graveyard from play, uh, or from, you know what I mean, it gets exiled instead. I mean, just between these, you know, if you have a player set of these two cards, that's eight cards, you're already off to the races in an aggro, aggressive type to build. Um, and then you could supplement it, and you could put in, like, cards like Brave the Elements. Um, you know, be, be able to give your guy evasion, protecting them from uh, being able to be killed and stuff like that. I mean, Travis Wu has a whole entire deck list called Naya Brave because it plays Brave the Elements and it just plays all the white creatures and it just tries to kill you dead. Um, it's Travis Wu, right? I think I'm, the, I know Brad Nelson was working with was a it lot Brad Nelson? recently Maybe as well. Brad Nelson. I'm sorry. It was you, Brad. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> he, is like, a, he has a regular listener. Right? Yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you never know. Shout out to Brad in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, Brave the Elements is it's a fifty cent card, maybe. You know, God's willing is maybe twenty five cents. Um, between these two cards, you know, they're really cheap and they're efficient. They keep your creatures alive and they enable you to be able to have some evasion swing through. And then on top of that, you can also play things like Ethereal Armor. Um, one white, it gives uh, your guy plus one plus one for each enchantment you control and first strike, and it's enchantment. You know, it. And on top of this, you know, you're able to make your little Dryad Mill tent or whatever, you know, now bigger and meaner and faster. And you're able to play things like Dictate of Hilliod, which we've talked about before. And yeah, it's kind of a terrible card for five mana, getting your team plus two, plus two. But in an aggressive deck, if that's at the end of your curve, that's perfect. Especially if you're playing it in a budget type deck, because, you know, you're going to be playing a lot of these little guys that are cheaper on the mana side and cheaper on the budget side. But the Dictate of Hilliod is going to literally just throw them over the top. Um, and especially if it's at the end of your curve. And you can also play things like Spear of Heliod, which is like maybe a dollar. I think it might even be two dollars, maybe. Um, pump your whole team, and it has the option of even be able to destroy things. 
I mean, these are all the, these C play and, and niche um, fringe type decks that you see online. But I mean, really, they're they're cheap, effective cards that you could literally throw in a mono white deck, and they're perfect. They I mean they they pump everything, they make things big, removal spells, stuff like that. I mean, you don't need to have you know the twenty five dollar Bremaz King of Arescos. I mean, yeah, he is an, an amazing card, but I mean, do you really, really need need him? I mean, yeah, he's great, he's competitive, but I mean, if you build a deck, you know, instead of playing Bremazes, why not just play something like Banisher Priest? Um, right. You know, so like, Bremaz, for really quick, for people who are on the podcast, oh, yeah, do <laughs> one white-white for a 3-4 body, and every time he attacks or blocks, he makes a 1-1. One, one. This was a pretty high uh, card when it first came out, so a lot of people really paid attention to it, but there could be some folks who are brand new who don't know who he is. Uh, Banisher Priest, same exact mana cost, one white-white, uh, for a 2-2 body that exiles uh, an opponent's creature as long as it's on the battlefield. Um, and so it's like a removal spell mixed with uh, a creature as well, which is really quite good. Yeah, I mean, like, and it's and he's like maybe 50 cents to a dollar now too, right? I mean, it seems like a pretty easy replacement for myself, what I think, you know? Um, it seems pretty good. Uh, with Brimaz, you can get out a little bit extra percentage points in your win value, maybe, uh, depending on the list, uh, which in the long run, it might not matter if all that you're doing is like an F&M or anything like that. But if you're going to a more competitive type event, that uh, percentage might just push you over. Right, and that's, and that's kind of the point here is that, you know, you need to start somewhere, and if you don't have the $20 to spend on Brimaz, then spend the 50 cents on Banisher Priest and work into it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like, Banish Priest is the same CMC. It doesn't... And it, actually, if you're looking for something with a little bit more bite, I really think that Eidolon of Countless Battles seems like he's way untapped potential. Oh, right? yeah, absolutely. Uh, one white-white for a creature whose power and toughness is equal to the number of creatures and auras that you control, and then he can bestow for four mana total. Right. So that's such a cheap bestow, which means that he'll stick around after somebody wraths the yeah. board or removes the creature. Um, you know, at minimum, he's always at least a 1-1, which sounds unexciting, but in those kind of decks... Like, you're going to go wide, right? You're going to play a lot of little creatures. And so he could just really hit pretty hard. Mm -hmm. um, to me, anyways, uh, you know, Idol on Countless Battles seems like he is cheaper than he ought to be. And maybe he doesn't have the right deck yet. But Yeah, I mean, like, and I think he's very, very well suited to be in a mono white. You know what I mean? Especially, you know, budget. I mean, again, we're talking about budget cards. Right. And he's like, I think, a buck or two dollars. He's huge bang for your buck, especially since he started around like six bucks. You know what I mean? He's dropped significantly. And. And the cool thing is, too, um, a lot of these cards have the potential of, of going up uh, eventually. I mean, yeah, Banisher Priest is about yeah. to rotate out, but who knows? Maybe Idol and Countless Battles might potentially go up. Um, and the reason why I suggest doing a monocolored deck compared to a uh, like a two- or a three-color deck is because of the lands. Usually the most important part of a deck that's been play multicolored stuff is the lands, right? And the most expensive part. And the most expensive part. No, right. no question about it. I've been looking at, at prices of the entire decks, some of these modern ones you guys run. And I, I see the eight hundred dollar price tag on it, and I look down the list, and it's like, oh, six hundred of it is. It's just the mana is, base. Is mana. Just the lands, yeah. Um, it, well, especially right now with the shock lands, to where those are jumping up in price right now. They're slowly starting starting to climb in value, uh, to where a month ago they were only like ten dollars, and now they're slowly tr starting to jump right back up. Yeah, they're starting to creep up again. Not nearly as high as they were before they got yeah, reprinted. They were all but around I mean, $20 before. Yeah, give it another year, and I, and I could see them being around 20 again. But Absolutely. Um, the other thing is like Mana Confluence, which is like an $18 card right now. I mean, it, it taps for any color you want. It's, it's you know, City of Brass, River of Brass. It's you know, perfect it's fixing. Perfect fixing, but the thing is, for 18 bucks, you know, it's, it's kind of really steep if you're on a budget. Um, so whereas when you're playing just, you know, even the Scrylands, or, you know, Could get like three temples, yeah, for that. Or like three, yeah, the, like temples of whatever you need. Eight dollars, whatever, right? And these are perfect. I mean, the other thing is too, if you are gonna play a uh, multicolor deck, I highly suggest playing like, if you're looking into getting the temples, um, I mean, I think they're still a great investment because you're gonna be in standard for another year and a half. Absolutely. But, I mean, the guild gates are gonna be here for three more months, and they're fifty cents. I mean, fifty cents compared to like you know a ten dollar temple of malady is great. Right? I mean, like, you're like, it comes to the play tap, yeah, I don't scry, but who cares? I'm getting my color fixing, which is the point behind it, is the color And it's fixing. amazing. I think it's, it's something that uh, when we're playing games of Magic, we don't always realize uh, how often we die to our own mana. You know, we just think, oh, I got unlucky. And it just sort of, you, you just toss that chip into the unlucky bin. But without really ever closely analyzing, I know that was a mistake I made a lot as a new player, was, well, I'll just put in, like, 
you know, instead of all these dual lands, I'll just do like 50-50 of each of these basic lands. And then like so often I would just be uh, color hosed, you know, one way you get or the color other. color locked, right? And, and that is the worst feeling ever is to have a grip full of cards and no way to play them because you don't have the mana for it. So what about just using the... Uh the, what are the just the guild gates? Yeah, from how about the guild gates? Yeah, that's yeah and I think they're perfect. great. Yeah, I, I mean, think they're great fixing. They're because they're so cheap. I the, mean, they're you know they're nothing. Fifty they're, cents. Yeah. yeah, I mean, at least at least at least away. they keep the place in your deck for what you can work into with your budget. Right. Yeah, and like the I think the temples are worth picking up, but I mean if it's if it's between that and buying a creature, like lands help you win games, but they don't necessarily win you the games. Um, I mean, literally, you're just paying for the scry at that point, right? Which you know, isn't that great, especially if we have other options, but we're not gonna have other options for long. So these are gonna whoa, be whoa, worth whoa, whoa. Soon. This guy is pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not saying no it's question. Not. So it the is it is pretty great, but but if if price is your real concern, then absolutely right. the exactly. gates are definitely a fully functioning uh uh slide in replacement. Well there's a reason why there's a difference between, you know, pricing between uh like Misty Rainforest or Marshlands or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, well, granted, that's coloring, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, usually I, the ones that find the colors that you usually see play are going to be more expensive than the ones that don't. And the decks that are faster yeah. are going to care less about the, the selection, likely, than the decks that are going to go long right. game and really need to find the right answers at the right, right time. Yeah. Uh, so. And mm -hmm. the next thing I would do, instead of playing, um, you know, if you're going to... You know, I would suggest playing a monocolor deck, but if you do do a two-color deck, that's great. Just make sure you find out the, you know, I mean, get your curve right and get your color fixing correct, so you don't, you know, girl, get, get your out curve of right, get your curve right. <laughs> 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 but just, you know, what I mean, so you're not getting locked out of color because that's not fun, and you will lose games on occasion, and that's not great. Um, but another thing is to find cards that have synergy with each other. Um, you've, you typically find typically find that pros when they're playing, they'll have cards that are just really powerful on their own. And the reason for that is because when they get into top deck mode, um, one card that's more powerful than two cards that work together well usually is better. Um, but the thing is, you know, on a budget, you're and not these, this isn't necessarily the same thing as having a combo. These are just cards that happen to be to work well together. Like, yeah. Take Madcap skills for instance. Yep. Uh, plus three plus zero oh, can't be blocked by two or more, unless it's by two or more creatures. I mean, this card is twenty five cents. You can find it in in you know bins yeah. everywhere for twenty five cents. Yeah. It, and uh, when this came out, people weren't that excited about it until people start playing with it. I mean, especially then, in limited, but it yeah, certainly has implica implications in standard as well. Yeah, Right, and the, and the only reason why they don't do that is for getting two for one, but I mean, it's a really, really good card. It's a it's a pretty sweet, cheap card, and the thing is, it can um, you know surprise the crap out of your opponent and just beat them to death with it, you know? But if you pair it with something like a Seder Hoplite, Mm. Which I, think, I love this combo. I think that uh, I think you talked about this one. I did. You, James? I did. <laughs> uh, if you pair with a Seder Hoplite, you know what I mean, and you and you pants him up, um, he's gonna get plus a plus one plus one counter from the heroic trigger, and he's not gonna be a five three or sorry a five two, and can't be blocked unless it's by two more creatures. I know. Right there, you're attacking for Boom. five damage, which uh, is two. likely might not won't be able to be blocked. Right. right. But I mean, if you if you play other enchantment stuff like uh, the boon of. Um, Perforos, not Boon of Perforos. <laughs> no, or uh, Deal of Perforos. Yeah. I mean, now you're able to like shoot and do more damage and things like that, you know. And it's just pairing well with this, and that's a or cheap even like a, red build right there. Uh, also, like if you were to go red white, you know, if your armor, like we were talking about before, right? That's like a huge synergy deal, right? Yep. It's just guys who, and really, I think a, a good example of this currently in standard is the hexproof deck. You know, you're looking at some pretty un unimpressive creatures overall. Uh, they just all happen to have the ability Hexproof, and then you throw these enchantments that also by themselves aren't really all that impressive. But you throw the whole thing together, and... Um, the only thing you die to is, like, sacrificing or getting your board wiped, right? Right. So, I mean, like, it's just great synergy, and it can do really well on its own. I think also if there's any graveyard strategies right now in the current st uh, standard that you could take advantage of, nobody's doing that, you know? And it's oh, all oh, synergy-based. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Um, you know, just cards that happen to work well in the graveyard. Well, and uh, they are all right now inexpensive for sure. Right, so like uh, looking for like the underutilized strategy or underutilized well, portion of the board. Well, while while we're on this uh, little kick too, uh, just to date us uh, here this last week, we had the uh, Star City Games Invitational, and the winner of that actually won it with like a fifty dollar deck, his uh, mono red by a. Uh, Tom <laughs> Resident Red Mages and Red Mages across the world. Yeah, would you rejoice. do this with a Grateful Dead shirt? It just, it, 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 it makes me wonder about your, uh, your younger years, James. Yeah, well, 
Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> as you were saying, but. But no, that 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 was pretty much it. Uh, Tom Rossi took down the tournament with a extremely fast, extremely aggressive, extremely cheap build of the mono red variant. Uh, it looked like it wasn't gonna do too much because it was very. It appeared to be fairly flimsy and easily to be brought down, but on the outside or when it actually played in, it hit a lot of the big meta game there. Gotcha. Oh, and another thing too. Um think about is like you know we've talked about rogue deck building in the past or home brewing um usually when you're on a budget you're gonna home brew i mean you're not gonna net deck because the net deck you know the the decks that are seen play in the top eight and tournaments and stuff are gonna be expensive because everybody's wanting those cards and right. certain mm -hmm. cards are totally irreplaceable like there's nothing else out there like it that do what it does like, there's right. nothing like bream as in standard there's nothing like elspeth in standard there's right. nothing like death right shaman in standard i mean there's certain certain cards that they're that good for a reason and we've talked about that in the past so um, instead of trying to just find something that's like a slightly worse copy of that, play just, something different. Just play something different. Play that's something better. of your own. Um, you know, and like like we had I had talked about last week was my card Ilon of Blossoms. I mean, this right now, like to be able to tap into the synergy with this card, is boundless. Literally boundless. There's so mad many cap different things. Like you could do the madcap <laughs> skills. Um, one thing that you know, again, we're going to talk about it, but Mana Boom. Uh, mana Boom. Play the Mana Bloom with it. I mean, it's going to rotate at a standard soon, but I mean, one green to draw a card and then Mana up yourself if you need to pay into the X is great. Um, very, very synergistic cards. And the thing is, they work on their own. I mean, you could play things like the Brain Maggots. You can play if you do happen to a Corsair or Kerfix that pairs well in this. I mean, just play enchantment creatures with Eidolona Blossoms bestowing things, enchanting things, playing guys. I mean, you're just going to net yourself card advantage, and card advantage wins games. Any Absolutely. Any blue can attest to that. <laughs> so, um, the other thing is, too, um, you know, another another combo that or synergy um, that that could be something that you could tap into is actually Battle Mage Thaumaturge. Um, you know, we've talked about this before in the past. I know Damon's talked about it yeah. on countless occasions. Um, but one blue, one colorless, you know, you have... Uh, Countlessly I idled on. Ah, I, yeah. so I was waiting for the pun. I was, like, I, I was talking so I couldn't think of it. Um, you know, it makes all your strive costs and all your instant sorcery, you know, that target things cost one less. Um, you're able to just, like, play it with, like, hour of need, right? Hour of need. I mean, two colorless for a blue, you know, uh, exiling number of target creatures for each creature card exiled this way is controlled with a 4 4 blue Sphinx creature on a token play. Now, this is the Travis right. Wu deck. And it costs two more. Um, this is the cheap, dirty blue. He built it originally for block, but he's tried it out in standard. He even tried it out in modern and, like, was owning people with Hour of Need yeah. in modern. It was Because you're just, like, play all of these cheap <laughs> one drop, two drop guys that don't really do a whole lot, but they're kind of cool and they're kind of powerful. You know what I mean? Maybe not powerful, but you know what I mean? They're kind of cheap on the CMC. They got some synergy got right some there, right? synergy. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, now they're all 4-4s four coming at you. Rawr. Like, seems like it's pretty powerful. I mean, you literally just pay some blue and make a huge flyers that have evasion are going to just crush your opponent. And you could pair this thing with, like, Launch the Fleet, of course, which we've talked about in the past. One white, you know, Strive. Um... Until on a turn, any number of target creatures each gains whenever this creature attacks. Put a 1-1 one, one soldier token onto the battlefield, tap and attacking. But wait, you can also hour and need those tokens if you really, really wanted to. And now instead of 1-1 one, one soldiers, now they're 4-4 four, four sphinxes flying. And your um, idol on countless battles is huge. And, and just crushing. Yeah, I made this deck. It was, I don't think I made it right. But it's, there's got to be something there's there. There's synergy. And that's the thing. Yeah. You are locked into a, a competitive net decking personality and not a Johnny <laughs> homebrew personality. So maybe that you just need to work on a little bit more. But, um, and you know, that's the thing though. We've talked about a few little, you know, a few couple different synergy type cards and things like that. And to be honest, like there's countless, countless options out there in standard to play cheaply and effectively. Um, you just really got to kind of put your, you know, get your put put your feet in the water, get them wet, and try it out. Yeah, I think that brings up a good point: is that people want to play on a budget. Um, there's a term that's uh, related strictly to Magic, the the real Magic, not Magic the card game, but Magic. Um, it's like the, it's called the price of Magic, and when you're writing, um, if you if you're ever writing a magic a magical creature or a magical person, you want to Magic has to have a price. You know, somebody can't just cast magic for no price. In, in in the card game, we have mana. You know, you have to be able to have mana. You only have so much to use. 
Well, if you ever look at magic books, you know, if you're reading magical literature, you're saying, where is he going with this? Well, I have a plan. Uh, <laughs> um, there's always a, price, a cost to everything you do. An opportunity cost, right? Whether it's whether it's a physical cost, like no, how much thing. money, how much money it costs, or how much time, or how much energy, there's always a cost to everything. Well, guess what? When if you want to build on a budget, there's a cost. Right. You have to be okay with that. Right. Now you think, that well, wait a second. I want to build build on a budget. I don't want the cost. Well, it doesn't work that way. So you either have to put the time into it, or you have to put the energy into it. Or or money. or money. There, there always is a cost, and so it just depends on how you want to pay for it. Right? That that works with everything. Physics, even you can't Absolutely. make something out of nothing. Right. You can just Little trans change. transform and make something from something else. And that's right. The laws of thermodynamics well, tonight on MTGU. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. The, the first law, uh, Newton's law. I think it's the third law. Um, oh. Anyway. Um, <laughs> but the point is to like you, you have to start somewhere, right? I mean, like the thing is, you can't go into a uh, into the mindset of being on a budget and have all of the things ever. Um, sometimes you're gonna have to play. You know, they're talking about Sphinx's revelation and opportunity in the in the chat. Right. Sometimes you're gonna have to play the opportunity. Sometimes you're gonna have to because honestly, a fifty cent opportunity is almost as good as a, a thirty dollar you know Sphinx revelation when you're on a budget. And the thing is, sometimes you're just gonna have to. That's one of those things. And when you're you win with, with your fifty cent card, doesn't make you just feel kind of more alive. <laughs> like screw there's, you there's guys made fun of me. There's something about that that is definitely a little bit magical. So, <laughs> um, no pun intended. I take it. You know, speaking of the people who are playing Sphinx's Revelations at your shop, uh, something else is very important to, to remember when you're choosing your deck, when you're building your deck, when you're picking the kind of cards for your deck. Remember that uh, for the vast, vast majority of players out there. You're really going to just be playing with the friends you play with usually. Mm -hmm. You're really going to just be playing at the shop you play at usually. Right. Um, you know, it's really not all that common to have folks who travel even locally on a very regular basis. Um, and so remember that you're playing against those people, not against the the international Magic the Gathering online meta. Uh, keep keep in mind, like as you walk around your shop and seeing people playing Magic, what kind of decks people are playing, and and build for that. And that may uh, allow you to have s make some different choices than what you would probably make if you were trying to be good on like Magic Online. It's I metagaming. Uh, I was down at the uh, Ogden shop this week um, buying the uh, the modern event deck. The modern event deck. And who's the f who's the guy that works there? Clayton. Tra Clayton. No, it's no. not Clayton. Has uh, the beard. Brad? Wait, Clayton has a beard. No, he does not right now. He shaved it. Oh. Is it Brad or Brian? Oh yeah, there's a new Brad. Uh, He's a newer guy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, he, he was telling me about how he plays with his buddies. This kind of goes back to last week talking about uh, competitive versus um, casual. And it also ties into this building on a budget. He plays mostly casual with his buddies. And he has his own rule system that they worked out. Um, I th he Basically, they can have um, four rares, one of, so four singletons. They can have any commons are uh, two ofs, or uh, uncommons are two ofs, and and then you know you can have a full play set of commons, and he says it makes the it, it makes playing a lot more fun because you have to work within these constraints and you're and you have to work, um, you know you have to think a little bit more carefully about okay so if I can only have four rares which four rares will I get and they're all singletons so right. Oh. That's awesome. No, That's it's actually sweet. it's actually really. I think it would be a really fun way to play casually. Well, that goes back to our conversation last week That's about it. casual magic, yeah, exactly. like how you can in you know incorporate your own rules. That's pretty sweet. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. and you guys jumped ahead, by the way, with the Did whole we? meta thing, guys. Anyway. Oh, that was <laughs> the next point on our no, thing. We were on upgrading though. a deck. We haven't, oh, haven't gotten upgrading yet. So Oops. really quickly, you know, when you're when you're playing, if you're playing, say for instance, you're trying to play red green monsters. Uh, you know what I mean? Maybe you're playing, instead of playing the Polychronos's, uh, Polychronos side, you could play like the Deadbridge Goliaths or Arbor Colossus, which I think are better anyway, but not the point. Um, you know, and you're, but you're playing with the Deadbridge Goliaths instead of the Polychronos. Uh, you know, maybe eventually at that, some point, you know, it'd be worth upgrading from the Deadbridge Goliath to the Polychronos. So, like, once you kind of already have your deck, if you, instead of, um, you know, building a new one, you're just trying to upgrade the current one, 
Um, think about what things you just absolutely hate when you see, or they're just not as good as you wish they would be. Um, you know what I mean? And start slowly investing. You know, uh, switch out your place at a dead bridge Goliath. You know, one at a time or whatever into the Polychronos or into whatever other card you're looking to look and playing. Um, you know, upgrading your ultimate prices and into uh, heroes downfalls, etc. Or even just upgrading your land base can be really, really huge. Um, especially you know right before rotation because now you have access to more different things than you did before when the new cards come out. Um, and the third step is Meditize Me Captain. Now we're getting into what you guys are talking about. And Meditize we, Me Captain. I think we kind of basically already covered meta. Uh, if we're okay. Um, it's just understanding the well, meta so that you know when to buy and when not to buy. Right. Is that what you're saying? No. Okay. It's it's more about actually um, picking cards that are effective for what you're doing on a budget. Whereas, like for instance, like okay, so you have you have Supreme Verdict. Supreme Verdict is great. Destroy all the creatures, right? But if you know that you live in, in an area where mo a lot of people play aggro and, you, and you're playing blue-white control on a budget and maybe you have two Supreme Verdicts and you can't exactly afford to you know, buy two more, maybe buying a 50-cent Aetherize is better because you're playing in an aggressive matchup anyway. Four mana, it bounces all the things back to their hands. Yeah, it doesn't kill it and they get it back, but at least you know it's something in that same place that you know what I mean is cheaper than trying to buy another uh, Supreme Verdict. Things like Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize, you know, is a twenty-five dollar card right now, or twenty twenty-five bucks. Um, it's a really, really good card, but um, it's not always going to be affordable. So maybe instead of playing things like Duress, right, would be an effective. Or the Brain Maggot, right? Or the Brain Maggot, exactly. Um, you know, it's great at ripping out the things you want to rip out. Usually, the Thoughtseize are used for ripping out the removal um, and stuff like that to protect your cards, which the Duress does very, very effectively on its own. Um, you know, things like that. Uh, you can play Banishing Lights instead of, you know, T-Spheres, things like that. Um, just kind of picking out, like, what you just said, though, the meta the meta, and finding Remembering out what, who you actually play yeah, against. who you play against and picking cards that are effective against them that, you know what I mean, will help you in that meta. So so when some people are collecting, uh, well, sorry, when they're, when they're building budget things, they're actually looking at collecting. And that really Except just four. sort of leads right into I can't to leave trading, this card right? on the screen. Huh? Sorry, I have to change cards because I can't. It's leave. kind of unnerving, right? It is. Uh, sorry to interrupt you there. I'm Pick. just going to go back to duress because oh, yeah, that's, that's a better pitcher. Even though it's this girl <laughs> Keep getting going. stabbed in the face. And here's your earworm for the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, as far as just building up your collection, kind of for the long term, uh, can lead you know right into to how well you trade and buy, and a lot of that you know to remember that it's affected. Uh, card prices primarily buy what's happening in the pro circuit, well, um, and to uh, you know know that maybe if if a card just pops in value one week, that there's a, a really good chance it could drop down again later. And so if you miss it on the first run, like hang out, you might be able to catch it on the backside. Right, or uh, the opposite effect too, though. Like it could jump up. I mean, Sphinx's Revelation Revelation started at six bucks when they first came out. Six bucks. Yeah, I think they're actually they even pre-selling for even cheaper than yeah, that. Yeah, they were. I think it was like four. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they skyrocketed up to 30, 35 bucks. I mean, that's that's a whole different ball game. But I mean, there's two different steps to like, um, you know, investing into a collection. Um, maybe you've got your decks and stuff, and now you're looking into growing your collection. There's going to be buying and there's going to be trading. Mm -hmm. um, typically, when you're buying, like uh, a lot of people will just buy booster packs, right? I mean, I don't know how you guys invest in your collections but you buy buying booster packs you four bucks you know gets you a booster crack it maybe you get a cool rare maybe you don't um but the thing is over time if you're looking for a bream as you know what i mean is it worth buying a booster box of journey and nyx just uh, for that bream as or sorry born of the gods born, born, born of the gods born of the gods born of the gods for a bream as you know there's a, a chance you won't get it right like statistics hey, speaking, hey, but you got you know, lots of commons Right, you got lots of stuff, but the thing is, like, if you're looking, if that's all your mindset is, I want a Bream As. That's all you're worried about. You you could care less about the rest of the Born of the Gods set. You know, you just need the Bream As. You know, but maybe spending a hundred bucks or more on a box of Born of the Gods isn't as great as just buying, you know, spending the twenty five bucks and buying that Bream As, right? Um, and that also leaves seventy five dollars left in your budget to buy something different, buy something else. I mean, yeah, you're not getting all of the different rares and stuff like that. You know what I mean? But you're just looking on buying. And I think oh, the better bait. you are at uh, trading and the more interested you are in trading, the more that box is going to have value for you because you'll right. find people who the rest of the rares that you're not interested in, uh, you can find homes for those to kind of start to upgrade your collection. And so, um, again, the more folks that you trade with uh, and the larger pool of people that you have to trade with, 
uh, is going to really affect you know the the choice on whether to buy or or just trade a whole right. Lot, like so. if you're a trader, I mean, usually it's better to buy the booster box because you're going to get tons of stuff that you can trade. And the thing is, there's a lot of people that um, do what we call p power trading, uh -huh. where um, they'll find somebody who has like a Bremaz, and the guy doesn't want the Bremaz, and so he's like, I just want cards. And then you're like, here, you know, look at my rares, and they end up pulling you know twenty different dollar rares or whatever for this one Bremaz. And over the course of time, you're able to take you know these these cards that aren't worth a lot and start slowly updating and trading into you know higher dollar cards which then can get you into other higher level cards or you can actually play them yeah i know some of the best moments for me as a, a trader has been having somebody relatively new come in and they have pulled a randomly really good card out of a pack and i'll basically set them up with every rare and uncommon they need for a deck that they're planning on mm -hmm. running like that are the equivalent cost of that rare and there were people who did that for me when i first got into magic right. too so um you know sometimes it's better to get the bulk and sometimes it's better to get the money rare the nice thing about doing that that way too is if you're able to tra trade into a brim as is that those those number of rares that you traded away are probably not gonna uh increase in value but the brim as probably will so in the long run you're probably better off doing it that way well and like and again, that goes back. And to that's the not saying thing, that right? you you took advantage of the other person because no, because they're excited to play those cards right now. Yeah, and they need them, and 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 you're also trading it at market value too. Right. So it's well, not like sometimes if you feel like you are taking advantage of your uh, trade partner because they don't know as much as you do, and so in that instance, it's very important for you to let them know exactly what's going on and sure. just hold their hand through it all and not be a bad person. In the trade, <laughs> I, I remember trading into my shock. Totally agree that I needed, and I would explain to them. I'm like, this shock land is this, 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 this. Here's all the research. This is good. You should keep it. And I'm like, no, but if, but no. But if you don't just, want to, it's terrible. I don't want to pay two <laughs> life to have it come into play. Tap. Right. I'm like, are you sure? Yes. Here's 15 more minutes of my time arguing about why you should keep it. And they're like, no, I really don't want it. I'm like, cool, thanks. Okay. Well, we'll sometimes trade. they just want the value out of it. Well, that's right. the thing. Okay. And then different things mean different things right. to different people, right? But with the shock lands, usually three months later, they came back and said, "I wish I never traded them." But that's not <laughs> the point. <laughs> but the point is, like, you should, you know, help. Don't don't rip off people when you're power trading. I mean, and even like I usually throw in an extra couple mm -hmm. cards anyway, Absolutely. just to kind of sweeten the deal because I I understand what's going on. And if they do too, that's still it's worth. You know, karma is a thing. Um, you know what I mean? But uh thing is to just kind of keep usually getting into planeswalkers is a really good uh bet um planeswalkers you know usually maintain value some of them will drop significantly um some of them skyrocket i mean look at liliana the veil or karn liberated i mean they mm -hmm. liliana the veil i remember she was selling at like 20 bucks mm -hmm. for a, a very very yep. short week there and then she skyrocketed up to 70 and she recently has gone down to 60 and that's just because jun wasn't seeing play um but now that jun's seen play again who knows where they'll go? Uh, Current Liberated the same exact deal. I mean, I remember picking up mine for seven bucks. Oh okay, yeah, I got into mine at uh, twenty, nice. and I felt like I was I was still of a deal. Yeah, you know? Now they're fifty, sixty bucks. Yeah. So I mean, um, and the cool thing is too. So when you're trading, another thing is too. If you're looking on just building up your collection, uh, if standard stuff fluctuates a lot. I mean, it one day, one week, something will be five bucks. The next week, it'll be a dollar. One week, it'll be a dollar. Next week, it'll be twenty. It kind of just fluctuates a lot. So, what I suggest doing is actually trading in some of your standard stuff into like modern staples. That sounds just, really weird, but it, they usually because modern maintains va maintains value a lot longer, unless something gets banned or this deck just totally gets wrecked out of a tournament or stops seeing play for several months. You know what I mean? Then the prices will start to drop, but usually they just maintain or slowly climb. Correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, probably the very, very most important thing. Are we ready to go to the most important thing? Yes. All right. So the very most important thing, uh, the thing you can gain an edge no matter how much money somebody else has spent, is you can always have more practice with your deck, whatever your brew is that you ended up with, whatever budget deck that you've shown up to the table with. Uh, if you have a lot of practice, you know, chances are they've never seen whatever it is that you're bringing to the table. And uh, if it's a known quantity, you can proxy up that style of deck and get practice against it. And really gain, uh, like Blades would say, a lot of percentage points in that kind of a matchup. Um, strictly through having practice. You know, practice doesn't cost you money. It just costs time. So. Right. Kind of goes back to what I was talking about is you got to pay it somehow. Yep. There is no... There is no uh, free magic. Free magic. Magic costs in one way or another. And well, the people who are the very best... Are you overabundant with? The, 
really have paid the cost in every way they know how. Well, and like yeah. <laughs> you see, like if you follow any any pro on Twitter or on any you know uh, media, they are always always just playing, 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 grinding out games, trying to get you know knowledge about their deck or whatever, whatever matchup, and that's what makes them pros. Is they're able to go into a matchup and understand you know what's what they need to do in what cer- certain uh, yeah. circumstance. You know, and so this is something you should definitely do is just practice. Did you say something, Blight? No. Okay. I just I thought I did. Heard no. Something. Okay. <laughs> no. You know, the, the skill level player isn't measured in, you know, foils and mythics and rares. It's measured in you as a player and, um, you know what I mean, your knowledge of the game and how you're able to play. I mean, you could sit down across the table with somebody with an $800 standard deck and with your $20 deck and you can beat them. You Cheap, can. dirty blue guys, I'm telling you. You can. No, <laughs> even mono red, like, you can yeah, yeah. beat them. There's lots of things. I mean, next level to next level. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the uh, mono black deck I put together, if you were to just take the uh, the Muta Vaults out, I pretty much bought into the whole deck for like under $10. Yeah, I think if you take the Thought Seizes and the, and the Muta Tombs out of my deck, oh, okay. like, it's like maybe 100 bucks. Right. Maybe. Yeah, it's crazy. So, yeah, there are certainly decks out there that do a lot. Um, I don't know, Blades, is there anything else that you wanted to add before we uh, kind of wrap up the event? I know, sorry. It's kind of strange. We're used to having you in the room, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, this... This is different, but I think I kind of like it. <laughs> and, uh, I can flatulate all I want, and this mic won't pick it up. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, Blades 2014. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just really quick, just do a, a total recap of from start to finish in you know maybe one two minutes, like start to finish. What would you say are the key points? Uh, so the key points is finding out what your budget is. Finding out what you're wanting to do with your budget. Uh, if it's building a deck, uh, try to get into some of the cheaper cards and just finding a monocolor deck, building that. Usually aggressive style decks are better. Um, or combo-y or, sort of or decks. Synergy, synergy yeah. synergistic decks. Yeah. Um, third would be uh, if you're upgrading a deck to pick the things that are helping you win or helping you in a, in a matchup that you're having a hard time with and upgrading those first. I usually suggest a land base if you're playing a multicolor deck. Um, next after that would be meditize, meditize me, Captain. <laughs> Sorry, to Captain Crunch. Um, you know, finding out what the meta is and tweaking your deck to be a part of that meta. So, because honestly, you know, who cares what the pros are playing? Who cares what the big huge tournaments? Like you are just playing? need to beat, you know, big you Fred about, down at the local yeah, shop. You need right? to worry about the Jobin who keeps making fun of you because your deck's not completely foiled. That's the guy you want to beat. You know, <laughs> so like trying to trying to find cards that help you out with your metas and stuff like that and practice your metas. Um, next thing is if you're buying or trading, um, uh, invest. Remember that you know buying magic is it's kind of like a stock market and everything fluctuates. So um, trading into things that are more stable, uh, you know, rares or lands or whatever are probably a better bet than trying to get up more value, more cards. Um, Although sometimes it's just worth it to blow your thought seeds on a whole new deck that you want to play. Exactly. And yeah. like, and, and when you're and new, just, that's great. And just measuring that cost, right? Knowing mm-hmm. that that's like, because uh, I have certainly traded. Uh, made trades that I know are bad and I just don't want to pay cash at the counter to buy the cards and so I will take a card that I know is worth a lot and I know has long term value and I go you know I just I feel and I guess that's the other big thing right is after the practice 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 and everything else remembering that like we're playing a game for fun (laughs) and to have fun if you're not having fun don't do it (laughs) right right. and so uh, you know I mean certainly we kind of take us to to a serious place sometimes but um, it's important to remember that it's not always all about maxing value uh, that sometimes it's just worth it to have fun. I know that uh, we'll get there in the combat step, but playing mono black was a hoot last week. So, also I don't know. I tried to cryptic for two voices, and I never felt better. And somebody who's a blue player is like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. And that's like Damon just said: practice, practice, practice. Get your play testing in. Test your deck out. Know the matchups. That'll help you way more than any amount of dollars can. And, and then you'll just start winning packs, and you can maybe even... Oh, that's actually another Drafting. thing. Trading packs. Like, if you win packs, a lot of times pack price... Uh, it, just, it depends on the set, but there are certainly players out there who just love opening booster packs, and you can trade booster packs at, at a you know value of $4 a pack and trade into some or cool even rares. three, and you're able to still yeah. make off. I mean, like, and that's the, that's the crappy thing, too. And they're like, you're, like, trading the Johnny, and they pull the Johnny out of it, and you're like, dang. Uh. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, I, I did that. I, I traded packs to get into an Erebos one time, and they pulled foil Erebos out of the packs I traded. Yeah. Out of it, which is total justice, right? Like, that's, you know, I mean, but and so it's a gamble. It all evens out. But I end. got what I wanted. And they got what they wanted. <laughs> they got some sweet Just stuff. Just a little bit better so. than yours. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything okay. else? Uh, I think that's it. Anything else on your end, Blades? Twitch no. Questions? You guys covered it pretty good. Okay. Shall we move into the combat phase? Combat, combat phase. phase. Wow, it's like it was repeating what I said. <laughs> uh, Damon, what did you do this week? So, um, like I've mentioned now several times, my situation has changed a little bit. Uh, my wife works Friday nights two doors away from the comic book shop during Friday Night Magic. So, um, anyways, it just it's really a lot easier for me to to go to F and M these days. And uh, I played Mono Black Aggro. Um, yeah. And it was a lot of fun. I had three Mute Vaults and four Thought Seas, and those were kind of the expensive cards in the deck. But outside of that, it was really just, um, you know, I mentioned before, I picked up four play sets of Uncommons, and it was like five bucks or six bucks for everything that I needed basically for the deck. Um, so it sounds bad. You just named seven cards that were almost 200 bucks. Okay. Like so. it just it just puts it into perspective, <laughs> yeah. like a little bit. You know what I mean? What we just yeah, you know, I mean, encapsulated. So but. yeah, eighty dollars for the four thoughtsies, and then I don't know how much Mute Vault's going for like these days. Twenty five thirty. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Anyways, that part doesn't matter. Black. The point that matters is that I, uh, you know, just just like we talk about all the time that that aggro decks always have a, a puncher's chance. You know, like you could be the worst fighter in the world fighting against the best fighter in the world. But if they uh, tuck their hand funny and you can make contact with their chin, like sometimes it's the right angle with the right force and they get knocked out. Um, and with this aggro deck, I just felt like sometimes people would keep a little bit of a loose opening hand or they'd get a little bit of like a mana screw or a little bit. They like choose a wrong creature to uh, kill with their kill spell. Well, it's like we were saying, like if you they stumble at any point, you just... At all. At yeah. all. Um, and there is... Oh gosh, there's a creature, and he is one in a black for a one one. And when he attacks, they, they lose, lose two life. It's, uh, and his name. You keep forgetting. Spiteful. We talked. Yeah, spiteful return. Spiteful like return, isn't it? Okay, so here was my favorite moment playing this deck. Uh, I went thought sees you steal your pack rat because it was like the mono black mirror. Right. So thought sees you steal your pack rat. I play pack rat. They murder my pack rat, or you know, here's now fall, whatever. Pack rat is dead. I play my spiteful return into an op empty board, going, you know, I just gotta like aggro this guy out. Draw spiteful return off the top of my deck. Bestow spiteful. Bestow return. spiteful returned. Smash them for six. <laughs> <laughs> wow. They go okay. Draw a card on my turn. Um, uh, sacrifice a creature you control with devour flesh. Okay, I have spiteful returned. Draw a card, spiteful returned off the top of the deck. <laughs> um, uh, smash you for six again, you're dead. <laughs> so the, the funny thing about that story is it was the commons. The, the common yeah. uncommons that are like 25 cents to 50 cents that won you the game. Right. I mean, Dossie's in taking their pack rat. It's kind of big, but I mean, you could do that yeah. with other spells and effects. Yeah, I mean, and I also had a removal Easy. spell in my hand, but uh, I had no idea that spiteful return did the sort of obscene things that he did. Um, so good and limited. So the only the only rough matchup is I played against like a blue white X deck, and um, I had a, kind of a slow draw. Actually, like really, just my draws weren't that great. But again, he also hit the turn four uh, supreme verdict both games, Ooh. and that's just really tough to Ooh. come back from Especially in that deck. In black. That's why you play I mean, Boon of Erebos. Yeah, probably. But I want to give this deck a couple more tries. Um, and uh, anyways, just the point is, I haven't just gone like played a deck for a long time that just goes smash your face and really the deck that i uh got competitive with first in magic um was the zombies deck from back in the day during instrument block and it was just a lot of two powered one drops and a lot of good removal and just you know kill you fast so anyways it's it's been fun i really enjoy it okay uh blades how about you what have you been, what have you been up to this week uh i've been on vacation Vacation. I've been out for a did you week. Get sunburned. I actually did get sunburned this morning. <laughs> uh, I tried to uh, hide under my t-shirt, so try to hope that my scalp wouldn't get sunburned, because that's the worst thing. Oh yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah, that the tops of your feet. If you ever got the tops of your feet sunburned, that is bad. Bad news. Oh yeah. You got to play any magic out there in California? IA? Uh, no, I'm in a little. A uh, tiny town that's about 100 miles north of uh, Reno, Nevada. 
so I'm right there close to the border, but there's no magic shops out here, but I've just been uh, hanging out with some family, uh, having some good times uh, around the fire and everything, and it's oh, yeah. it's been a good break for me and my family. Oh, good. That's awesome. Sounds great. Rich, how about you? I, don't, I had to think. Did I play magic this week? <laughs> uh, I mean, we've just basically, I just streamed and played a little EDH. That was about it. Like, nothing super fantastic, spectacular, but trying to get ready for the summer, which yep. is here already, but yep. you know, I've got three or four birthdays this week coming up. Oh, wow. In my, in my uh, family, how many so. birthdays do you have? I, I only have one. Still, in my family. <laughs> in my family. Okay. So, everybody's born within a week of each other. Go figure. But, anyway. So, All right. And, uh, what have you did, Don? Oh, what have what you did? What did you did? I did uh, some. I just been working on tech. I need to calm down this week. I'm gonna make it a make it a point to uh, try to do less tech this week and more fun. So. It looks so good though, James. Yeah, it looks it's, so. It's, it's getting good. there. It's it's still a little rough. There's still hitches here and there. There's places where I forget to update this or that, and technical you know, what's, difficulties. What's interesting? I think maybe, maybe a lot of people don't realize. Um, is there so much of, of the stuff that you're seeing, uh, especially for our, our uh, streaming games of Magic, that James has just programmed things that we need from scratch? Um, oh, yeah. yeah. And then I broke it right before we started <laughs> streaming. <laughs> we have a life total counter that automatically – Rich Rich was complaining last week that he wanted the ability – I said complaining. It was but, my you know, fault. <laughs> now, he, he wanted the ability to be able to update the, st uh, the totals because I was sort of laying down on the job and not updating them. He was eating Oreos. I was eating Oreos. <laughs> I got sidetracked. Anyway, so I did program a, a – an app so that he can update the score from his laptop and it will appear but on the screen. But I can screen. also do it from my phone in the same game and also well, affect yeah. the We can all be on a, the same app all at the same time doing it. And, and competing it's mind -boggling. show up. I, I don't want to see what happens when you compete to update scores. No, let's that's not do that. <laughs> we haven't done that yet, like, luckily. Oh, yeah. We might break it. But so that's what I've yeah. been doing. But my goal this week is not is to do a little bit less of that and a little bit more well, fun. Another thing you guys don't know about James is he has this habit of being like, hey, you know, we did this. I did this really cool program, but it's not good enough. It's so <laughs> I'm going to totally just fix make it. it better <laughs> and then it breaks <laughs> and then better again and like basically like the moment we're like okay we're comfortable he's like no we're gonna go you know one mile farther <laughs> to infinity yes yeah, so and like, beyond we're it's yeah. it's been a lot of fun so, though. i'm i'm appreciated so. oh yeah james. The, james makes our job so much easier we make his so much worse <laughs> <laughs> that's how it's supposed to be he, he brings the tech stuff we just colored. bring the personalities or in rich's case the lack thereof i, I just <laughs> oh, i don't daggers i don't want yeah. to count my life total on dice or anything can i just have it on my phone is that a thing? That I could is that a thing? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it is. <laughs> is there a way that we can just bring up every card we talk about? <laughs> yes. And make you do it. The yes, time? there is, and <laughs> anyway. that's on its way, but maybe not for two weeks. All right. But <laughs> anyway, so anyway, that's uh, that's what's happening in our neck of the woods. What is that from? I can't, can't remember. I don't know. But oh, that's that's. There the, we go. Yeah. Blades had like the camera just like at his his nose and he mouth for creepy, a second. Man. Yeah. yeah, just yeah. raise that camera a little higher. Anyway, <laughs> let's let's. Sorry for you guys in podcast life. Let's Anyways, move along. along. Second main phase. So this is the part of the podcast where we talk about feedback and iTunes reviews and contests and uh, all of those good things. I have. Do did we? Get, did I I read that email that we got from our friend from Arkansas. Yeah, should we uh, read that out? I think it'd be worth reading for sure. He was really cool. Yeah, let me find it. I have it right here. I was just going to You'll go know who he is as soon as we bring it up. Oh, okay. It's really funny. I loved it. Uh, it's from Tim. He wrote, uh, I wrote you all. <laughs> Y'all, yeah. come on. It's easy. <laughs> I wrote, wrote you all a while back from about. Okay, you got to help me because I always say this wrong. This is when I say Arkham's Asylum and you say. Acroma's memorial. Acroma's Acroma's memorial. <laughs> but failed, but failed to let you know uh, where I'm from. I'm from Arkansas, which would explain all the y'alls in the last email. I will try to avoid y'all this time. I've been practicing y'all, uh, although I did find it quite amusing listening to you, Tonian, 
try to say y'all properly. <laughs> y'all. Like Utah. I, I think Utonian you, works. You We're live fine. by Hooper, dude. It's called Hooper. <laughs> like H O O P E R. He, he, he did say Utonian. Anyway, competitive is destroying. Uh, let's see. My first response when I saw the title for last week's podcast was yes, competitive is destroying casual play. However, while listening to the podcast, it occurred to me that Wizards of the Coast does not have the ability to force one or the other. Exactly. That is decided by us as players. I have personally never played a game in a store, not because I'm against it, but because the nearest local game store is about two hours. I don't think that's considered local. <laughs> Any direction <laughs> from where I live. Since I play mainly for the social aspect of it, which is enough spike to uh, quit with enough spike to want to win all the time, I think playing in an LGS would provide the best of both worlds. And I've decided to... I've decided, too, that rules that are set, quote, set, by Wizards do not mean it is not still casual play. Any game I can think of has rules established by the maker of the game, even if they are altered by house rules occasionally. Perhaps the question is not competitive versus casual after all. Uh, after all, all of my casual games are also very competitive, which, uh, way too, uh, with way too much stress involved. Uh, it is maybe more of a divide between pros and amateurs. Perhaps all that is needed is to shine the spotlight on what amateurs are doing as well, which you guys do a great job of. Are you calling us amateurs? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> to... Yo, hey, buddy, who are you calling an amateur? <laughs> this, way, uh, this was probably way too long. No, it wasn't. But it does seem like a multi-angled issue. That it is. Thanks for all you do for magic, Tim. Hey, Tim, just uh, thanks so much for just responding. Um, we had a lot of fun talking about our topic last week. Yeah, and it did and get some good And we're glad responses. that you were part of that, um, just, just that you're entering into the conversation with us. And that's really one of the things we seek to do uh, with the podcast is just to be uh, a positive voice, but also just a voice, you know, in the community and, and to, to hopefully have topics that uh, launch discussions and that we can all be part of together. So. Yeah, I think that was a fun topic. It was actually a, uh, it, it actually turned out better than I thought it was going to, so... Um, you never know when you get into a show how it's gonna how it's actually gonna happen until you until you do it, do you? Yeah. So no. anyway, so let's see. Next up is uh, I, iTunes reviews, which we don't have any new iTunes reviews. Come on, oh, guys! It's, it's the first week we've missed in a long time. Yeah, so. I know we have twenty three twenty three five star reviews. That's awesome. Is that enough? I don't think so. No, I don't think it is. It never is enough. <laughs> but when I've looked, when I've been in iTunes, let's see if I kept it up here, um, and I've gone to uh, the other game section and I've and I've looked for us uh, in like. Uh, have we moved up? Well, uh, under what's hot, typically we're number sixty-six. Ooh, we're three. Wow. From oh, <laughs> let's see. That's actually kind of awesome. Let's see if I'm that's where that's what at least that's where we've been when I, I think looked. We can do better. That sixty six. That sounds a little bit. Like, uh, yeah, we can do better. Out. And I think this is a fluctuating list based on when you release uh, the podcast. So I think that even maybe if I look the day of, it'll be different. Anyway, right. guys, get in the get in. Uh, go to iTunes. Give us five star reviews. Subscribe on subscribe Twitch. Subscribe on YouTube. Twitch. On Twitch. Like our videos, you know that helps. That helps people see them. There's a lot of stuff going on, and we're happy to have you along for the ride. We just are having a ton of fun, even if it seems like I'm stressing out. <laughs> and <laughs> now the content. Uh, no, now the uh, poll of the two weeks. Which segment? Which is your favorite segment of the show? We now have 13 results, and I am going to go look at them. Do 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 do. Um, I'm going to log in because that, that's where I get to see all of the results. Oh, even the write-ins? I'm kind of yeah. excited to see yeah. some of those. And then, and I don't have a new one, but, uh, boy, let think of ones while I'm getting in here, guys. All right, awesome. All right, or chat room. What should we do for our next poll? What pressing matter faces the magic community? I, I, it would be funny to do it about the Bodo site. <laughs> Go oh, back I'm to the old thinking, design. Like, are you casual? <laughs> do you consider yourself a casual? Oh, we could do Johnny Spike Timmy. Johnny Spike Timmy. <gasps> Worthos Mel Melvin. Oh, let's do all of those. Yes, yeah. that is yeah. a good idea. Pick which one? You what are. kind of player are you? And one of them could be Jobin. 
And <laughs> I have to do it. <laughs> As you the have sixth. To. The sixth one will be Joe. Yeah. Okay, here are the you results. Can you can do a bill too, so there's seven. Um, it's his. Yeah. Where are the results? I'm looking for the results. Why can't I see the results? I think that that's probably it. I think that's what we're I think that's for. a good one. I thought I knew where I was looking. Obviously, I don't. And this is great television, people. Yeah. Um, do, 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 yeah. No, every time you talk about the television, it's anyway? never good. Sorry. We're talking about the uh, poll for the week that we had. Okay. 13 How many people for. we had. Yeah. So, like, I must have ADD or something. Because, or, like, I'm like, ooh, chat. <laughs> <laughs> Forget everything we're on podcast land. <laughs> I guess I'll take this moment to just uh, say really fast, um, if you guys haven't checked out any of our uh, live streaming um, or, you know, pre-recorded, if you've missed them now. uh, YouTube content. Yep, Yep. YouTube content and things like that. We have not only the show uh, streamed live, but we also uh, have started playing Games of Magic. Um, They've largely all been focused on modern so far, but we are going to be doing some standard content as well. And really... We're doing it after this, aren't we? uh, Yeah, we're going to be doing another one directly after the podcast today. Um, but anyways, we just, I feel like we've, uh, developed quite a bit in that arena recently and it's certainly an area, I mean, we've only done it three times. So, uh, we're excited to bring the very best that we can to you guys, um, because of our connections at shops and some other things, we really have the ability to play pretty much any deck you guys want to see. So if you're like, oh, I heard about that, their, uh, ad nauseum combo over there or, uh, <laughs> that ad nauseum. <laughs> yeah. We're from, uh, you know. Hey I don't know where this is from. Yeah, I don't with, know. With Ganthin, We're from Canada. <laughs> okay, so here's the results. Draw step, four votes. Huh. Main phase, three votes. Combat phase, one vote. End step, one vote. I can't decide. They're all great. One vote. Wow, that, that actually was just combat. Cool. Let's just, let's no, there was there was one person for combat. There was several. I mean, nobody voted for second main phase. I don't blame them. That's what we're in right now. And how bad is this? <laughs> yeah, we should just I let mean, this linger. So just let it settle. Just yeah, long keep as, keep moving. Do we have any fun? Drag writings? it out or no? That's what I was trying to find, and that's what someone in the in the in the chat room just says. Just vote, then look at the results. No, that wasn't the thing. It was I have some other. I can actually look at these. I left the other in there, and for some reason, that's not what's showing up. And <laughs> I'm so huh. professional. Uh, but anyways, if there are any kind of decks that you guys particularly want to see, hit us up on Twitter. Um, that's a good place to just you know make a quick request. Uh, certainly hit us up in the chat. <laughs> hit us up on our Facebook. You pissed so many people off with your accent. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, we don't sound like that. No, no. Okay, I did not. I... That was Blades Music Canada. If yeah, you guys yeah, that, have that ever watched the... uh, HomestarRunner.com, there's a uh, oh, coach, oh. coach Z. Hey oh, that's what it reminded me of. He is yeah. so funny. <laughs> I was really going for the Coach Z uh, uh, is what I was I, I did. It, it was, was interpreted by other people. I did say Wisconsin. And yeah. Like, yeah, we do kind of sound like that a little bit. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know if that's like, true or not. <laughs> yeah, we we love people from the uh Do we actually have a lot of folks in canada, canada who hang out with yes, us so yes. we're more the east coast than mm-hmm. okay so here's here are, here are the oh, here are the write-ins band? uh one person says other tied between draw step and main phase someone else said other bloopers yeah oh yeah at the end. Love the and bloopers. someone else said other fight club so Ooh. those are the, those were the write-ins so thank you so much for that and I'll try to put up the next poll tomorrow or the next day. It will be, who are you? (laughs) Um, Let's see. Uh, That is just about it. Again, thanks for supporting us. Who are are you? Who are you? Who, 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 I really want. I was going with like Alice in Wonderland. You guys <laughs> no. are just like CSI, whatever. No, CSI. no, no that's <laughs> actually the who. Okay. Oh, Rich, you are young, sir. What and is, that is, what is delightful. That? All right. We're moving it's along. Hawaii 5 Okay. This is where you guys be quiet so that I can do this. End step. Okay. <laughs> I'm not at the right place in the dock. If you want to contact us, you can send email to mtgupodcast at gmail.com. Interact with us on Facebook by going to facebook.com slash mtgu. Follow us on Twitter at the mtgu. Catch us live on Thursday nights 
on twitch.tv slash mtgu and find us on youtube and stitcher so for the mtgu podcast i'm damon i'm rich i'm blades and i'm james now we pass the turn to you Oh, that wasn't so bad. To the wow! To the... Yeah, and then we can't sing the rest of the song. <laughs> all these... Crawl. <laughs> yeah. So, sorry to all oh. my Canada listeners. That wasn't meant to be serious. Mother. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mother. I was just typing this in the chat room. I hear that uh, Canada has the best chips. Dude, really? they do. They have mustard chips. They're so good. I've just heard that you go to if you want something really good, go to Canada. They have the best chips. Oh wait, no, no, no. They have this thing. Um, poutine. No, poutine. 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 Yeah, I, around Montreal apparently. I want to try some poutine. Me too. You know what that sounds like. I like I to get into like. that. I have no idea what it sounds like other than um, really tasty French fries. It sounds like plantains. French fries, meat, and gravy. I thought that was, it was James. Plantains. And curds. Plantains. Uh -huh. Plantains. Uh -huh. Yep. Yep. Mustard chips. They're just like they're chips, like like riffles or ruffles or whatever with mustard powder on them. You know what I've been getting into is the jalapeno chips lately. Oh, I love jalapeno chips. Oh, those are good. Yeah. Why is it we get them my, food? My wife loves uh, the. Fritos, like chili cheeseburger or chili cheese flavored, like Fritos, and I can't stand them. I don't really. Not, yeah, Those I'm are not for that at all, man. Can't handle it. I like um sea salt and vinegar though, so I guess I'm a grody person. Okay, that that that's the white that you got in you. Lurgan says when I listened to the podcast, I, I assumed things went a lot more smoothly than they did today. See, uh, <laughs> Lurgan, the thing you wanted need to know about the podcast is editing happens. I mean, not heavily. One, and, but and this was a little bit of a rougher one, show. Yeah, but I, well, but I love editing. That was my bad. I think on that one. Sorry, I, guys. I know that one thing that was great about being just podcasting and not streaming was <sighs> that we could just. Totally going on a rant, like a tirade. I know. We could just, just and then and then just cut it, out. cut it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I I added in so many of the p words. Yeah, we just have two hours yes, long episodes. Blades. Yes, you did. Anyways, I think actually no. I think today we got through in about an hour and ten minutes. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, that's not bad. It. Yeah, we reined it in. But I'm just saying, yeah. like, now we just have two hour long podcast. Hey, so, so yeah, I just think that's in. funny that he said that that it seems like we were. <laughs> we, we do not have ketchup chips. And and we like I said, Jello. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and one more thing about <laughs> the podcast is the stream is going to get better every week. That's the I hope thing so. to remember is that every week we're going to just get a little bit better. So, so here's the deal. We're going to close down the stream for a little while. We don't have the ability to like push it over to one of our old things. Yet. Not right now. Next. Sometime we will. We're going to close down the stream for a little while, and then we're going to come back and play some Magic. Yep. yep. I'll be playing uh, Blue, White, Red Control featuring Karanos. I'm pretty excited about Standard. that. Standard. And I'm going to be playing my Black, Green, Aggro, which is actually somewhat a budget deck. So. And I should be standing on the outskirts telling them what they should have done. <laughs> <laughs> Needs more blue. More cowbell. <laughs> more cowbell. <laughs> So, anyway, thanks guys so much for so joining thanks us. Thanks everybody that came and and it, please stick around. So Ooh, we will burb. we will see you soon. Wave goodbye everybody. Ooh.